Now that I'm a few months into my data science job, I'm lucky to have interacted with many data scientists across a bunch of different teams. And I've also had the honor to interact with amazing data scientists that I really look up to. In this video, I wanted to share with you guys my observations on what makes a great data scientist. This is not just what the minimum skills are to get into data science, like math or programming. If you guys are interested in that, I can also make another video about it. This video is for those of you that have high aspirations for yourself when deciding if data science is the right career choice. You don't want to be just a mediocre data scientist. Or if you're already a data scientist, what you can do to level up. So now without further ado, these are the five things that make a great data scientist, in my opinion. Number one is growth mindset. Number two, unbiased curiosity. Number three, paranoia about the data. Number four, organization. And number five, storytelling. And a bonus one, which is choosing the right domain. Now, in my opinion, the most important trait that differentiates a great data scientist from an average one is a growth mindset. A growth mindset is when you believe that you're able to improve and learn. You might have to work really hard on it, but you know that you'll get there. Now, contrast this with a fixed mindset, where you believe that your skills and abilities are predetermined and set in stone, and this is just the way you are, forever. Now, a growth mindset is incredibly important, because the speed at which the data science field is evolving is so incredibly fast. New data science technologies are literally being built faster than you can possibly learn them. And the standards of how to analyze data itself is shifting every day as well. When I was working in bioinformatics, one day everybody was you know, happily working in R and then it felt like suddenly it was all about Python because the ML packages are just, they're just so much more powerful and easier to use. So guess what? I had to go and learn Python and the corresponding packages. Now, if I had a fixed mindset, it would be something like, oh no, I don't really know Python. I don't understand this documentation and the syntax is so confusing. I must be too stupid. I should just give up. Now these days, with new things popping up left, right, and center, like AutoML, GPT-3, etc., you get where I'm coming from? Kind of hard if you have a fixed mindset. What I like with my growth mindset, though, is something more like this. Oh no, I don't really know Python. I don't understand this documentation and the syntax is so confusing. I must be too stupid. So I need to get less stupid. Yay. Imposter syndrome is real, my friends, but that's a topic for another time. Unbiased curiosity. You ever know some people that have really strong opinions about things without, you know, really thinking about it? Like for somebody that just truly believes that Tesla stock would skyrocket, do a stock split, and then continue to skyrocket again, which totally did happen. Or someone that just truly believes that coconut oil is a miracle drug and can cure cancer and all diseases. Well, if you're either of these people, then data science is probably not for you. Let's deconstruct unbiased curiosity. Unbiased is when you go into something with an open mindset and craft, the, and craft the story from the data. Yes, you should always have hypotheses to test out, but it's a big no-no to go in with a ready formed opinion and just try to gather data to support your opinion. Hey, your opinion can be very well amazing and correct. Like our friend here that invested all their money in Tesla and became an overnight millionaire. But that wouldn't make you a very good data scientist. A data scientist needs to be unbiased and let the data shape their opinions. Now, the second component is curiosity. You have to be a curious person. The best data scientists that I've met are the ones that always ask themselves questions. Why is this metric always falling? What other products do our customers use? Why is mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell? No, that's just me. That led me to four years of an undergrad degree in science to answer that question. Well, when you get unbiased plus curiosity, you know what that makes? A hella good scientist. And what is the second part of this job title? Oh, it's scientist. Judge, I rest my case. Paranoia. This was the one that was really surprising to me when I was not creepily observing great data scientists at work. I noticed a common trait among them is paranoia. Not that they think that the government is out to get them. I think not, at least. Have you guys heard about sanity checks? It's when you write some code or some constraints and queries to make sure you haven't gone and messed something up. The problem with data science is that even if you do something wrong, you'll still get results, provided that you didn't make a syntax error. An example that I'm very embarrassed to say I have done is something like basically messing up the denominator or fraction I was trying to compute. I did like sum instead of count in SQL to be exact. And well, if I did a sanity check, I would have then re realized that the number of distinct rows was completely off but I didn't. 
And this was extra embarrassing because a senior data scientist caught this for me. In fact though, I was lucky that the data scientist even caught it for me. It can be very bad if you're not constantly checking yourself because some things are really hard to catch and realistically, nobody's gonna go through your code line by line to catch it for you. And then everything you do downstream is wrong. And then you present the wrong findings. And then people make the wrong decisions. So yes, great data scientists are always very paranoid and putting sanity checks everywhere. Organizational skill. Ah yes, this is by far my greatest weakness. But what I've observed in great data scientists is that they are very, very organized. They spend a lot of time thinking through their objectives or hypotheses and write down the steps that they will take to accomplish them and then actually follow through with it. This is incredibly important because it's incredibly easy to go into analysis paralysis or if you're like me, get distracted by all the cool things you can do that you lose track of the most important questions and objectives that initiated the project in the first place. A great data scientist also organizes their code, so this does not happen. Yeah, what does what does, um, A stand for again? <laughs> Storytelling. You spend a lot of time on a project and you're really into it. And you find some really cool results or build an awesome model that solves like half the problems that people are always complaining about. So, you know, you go and document everything and you show it to people, super excited. But guess what? Nobody cares. Everybody is too busy working on their own things and making sure that their own deadlines are met. This is why storytelling is so important. A great data scientist knows that the work is not done when they're done with the technical stuff. They need to convey the awesomeness of their findings or what they made to non-technical people. This is usually business people or product managers. And you need to do it in a way that they can understand. Because you have to convince these people to actually use your work. It sounds crazy, right? But this is what I learned very quickly when I did my first analysis and I was super proud of it because I totally gave the team direction on what to do for the next project and, and nobody cared. And it's totally my fault because it's not their job to decipher some obscure looking analysis I just plopped into their inbox. So yes, storytelling is very important, both verbal and through writing and visuals. Bonus time! Great data scientists care about the business issues and their domain. This one didn't make it onto the core list because I believe this is something that is more about finding the right domain for you to do data science as opposed to a skill in itself. This is extremely important though, because the data science role works very closely with business functions and leadership. And those in business functions and leadership are primarily concerned with, well, the business. So you as a data scientist, if you don't care about tech, you would hate being a data scientist because who cares what new gadgets or services the team is building? And you know, if you don't like medicine, why would you even bother to think about how to improve it? You get my gist? To find the right business domain for you, I think you really gotta put yourself out there. I don't mean that you have to go get an internship or a job in like different domains, which requires a lot of work and a lot of commitment. Instead, you can totally do projects about domains that you think you might be interested in. Resources like Kaggle have so many different data sets and the time commitment can be as long or as short as you like. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and it's helped you move forward in deciding if data science is right for you or what you can do to level up as a data scientist. And finally, don't forget to always minimize effort and maximize outcome. I'll see you guys in the next video.